All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and we are here. It is. We are right here. One. Yes, we are. <laughs> we are sitting right here. And as you're listening to this, it is week one of the NFL football season. We made it. Made it through the off season. Made it through the preseason. And I'm I'm just ready to watch some Bills football. Like I'm yeah. so excited for this. I'm I'm amped up like, for the game. So so you're you're a college football guy, right? You're Ohio State. I'm Florida State, right? Mm-hmm. Um, man, there you can watch other games outside of like your own team's games, and you're like football, yay, right? Like you like football. I watched Florida State play with my daughter, right? And I was on pins and needles. Like she doesn't mm-hmm. mind if I get loud. Like so, I'm yelling and screaming and stuff like that. And she's fine. She's asleep. She doesn't care. Like that feeling is just amazing. So I'm so excited for Sunday to watch the Bills play. And, and I mean Thursday as well. But once again, I want to see the Bills play. So I'm I'm very right. excited. Yeah, I was actually going to mention that is like last. Like we've made it through the preseason. The preseason's like the fans preseason too. But also, it's not like as much. Yeah, my preseason is week one of college football where yeah. like, I, I am getting myself mentally and physically ready yeah. to be on my couch all day watching football or I'm at a bar all day watching football, whatever, like whatever the day, wherever the day may take me. Like I, I have to prepare myself for that. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm glad that I, I took the, the weekend to do that because I may or may not have fallen asleep mid game a couple times this <laughs> past weekend. So I can't I like I gotta I gotta get that on my system now. Yeah and be ready to go for the Bills game because I I'll be so upset with myself if I fall asleep during the game. But I also don't think that my body will let me do that for a Bills game. It's just no. like you said, it's it's just different when your, it's your when it's your team like that. Your your fiance is a, her whole family is a Steelers. Oh family, yeah, that's so the like other you thing. won't you yeah, won't be I, you won't even want to take a nap during the game, right? Unless no, because I mean, I'm well, we're not watching the game with her family, but I'm going to be watching the game with her, and I'm I was going to say with her, she's, she's going to be upset by the end of it. Like she's not going to be happy with me. We're probably Look, not going to be on speaking terms. The ref, the rest of Sunday, once is the game ends, be- I mean, it's probably think better about it, right? for her. Honestly, she's probably going to be like, I- "I'm glad I don't have to talk to him for a little bit." The the Bills win, plus you kind of get the day off. You know what I'm saying? Good so thing I mean, she it's doesn't kind of a, listen to this, right? Right? It's kind of a win win <laughs> for everybody. Um, no, I'm I'm so 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 so. It's gonna so be excited. it's gonna be very fun to watch the game and be able to hopefully go three and zero now against the Steelers while we've been together, and um, I'll be able to rub that in her face another year, which I, I love being able to do that. Um, but it's game day, and I'm I'm so excited. Um, I'm the, I'm a little nervous. I, I won't lie to you, you. You're nervous? No, it's because. So let me explain. Jesus Christ, why are you always coming at me? Um, I'm a little nervous <laughs> because. Um, we go to my in-laws um, on Sundays, mm-hmm. right? So I'm trying to figure out a polite way to tell my wife that we should wait until after the Bills game. I think you just um, say, hey, can we wait until after the Bills game? Um, she's, I, like, she's, I might be crazy here. <laughs> so her parents don't watch football, but she has said multiple times, like, hey, you know, dad will put the game on for you if you ask, right? And, but, like, I'm sure we've been together for, for a while now. You don't, but don't want to be fight. yelling at the TV in front of them, though. Well, I, I also don't want to be like, hey, turn the game on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be rude. I'll, I mean, I, I might watch it on my phone. I'm going to watch it, right? But, you know, I'm a little nervous because it's like, hey, how do, I, how do I politely tell my wife, like, can we – can we wait and it? How far? Not how far of like a drive upset. is it? How far is there, it, of a drive is it? It's it's about thirty minutes. It's about thirty. Okay, minute so drive. that wouldn't be bad if you guys wanted to drive separate. See, and that's another option, right? I could always be like, "Hey, I'll come up there after the game." Like, yeah, you just know, hey, uh, just meet them over there. <laughs> give you the chance to really focus in on the game. A little different when it's the girlfriend versus the wife. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe uh, that's a good maybe suggestion. that's gonna work. Just hey. Honey, I'm gonna. It's not a bad suggestion. I'm gonna come a little bit later than you are, just because I'm gonna watch the game first. And yep, that's I'll not be a bad there suggestion. after. Who knows? I like that. Um, all right, like we do that. have to mention one more thing before we get into the prediction segment with Meerkat uh, from Trainwreck Sports. We are, we are not. The podcast is not being posted anymore on 
the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast Network. And I have to be really careful about how I say this because we're still a part of Buffalo Fanatics. Like I want to make that very clear. We're we're not leaving Buffalo Fanatics or anything like that. We However, it fired. seems like Buffalo Fanatics is going through a bit of a change on how they uh, their work in their podcast um, platform. And it all used to be going out on one podcast platform. We are we have been for a little while on our own stream also, but now it's just strictly that. So if you want to listen through podcast form, go search Nap Nose Buffalo. It'll show up, I promise. And then you can just subscribe and it, any any major pl- podcasting platform. That's how you'll find it. We're still on YouTube, Buffalo Fanatics YouTube also. If you want to watch us, if you decide that you actually want to see our faces, we appreciate it. But uh, yeah. you can you can watch, you can listen. But I we I feel like we had to make that clear because there was a couple people in the comments recently yes. who have been like, hey, how come I haven't seen you guys on the Buffalo Fanatics podcast network? Um, and it's because everybody seems to have moved off onto their own um, stream pretty much for the podcast. So search the podcast title. You will find it. It's going to be these same yes. ugly faces. And, yeah. uh, and that'll, I mean, we, I, we put them on the cover art. I also, also just tell your friends, right? I know, yeah. I know that y'all get together in, in a big group, you know, five, six, turn it on. Right. But go, go tell your friends, right? If you have friends who listen to the show, let them know like, Hey, by the way, if you search nap knows by for, and I'm only saying this because my best friend actually texted me and was like, Hey, um, where's your podcast? And I was like, search nap knows Buffalo. Right. And he was like, Oh, I've, I've just been doing it. There's like, oh, okay, well we're on our own stream now. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so make sure you tell people who listen to the show as well. We're going to keep repeating this message. What for a couple of weeks. So yeah, everybody probably, probably knows everybody weeks, gets yeah. it. Um, <clears throat> because there, like I said, there were a couple of comments that did say, Hey, you know, I work long hours. I don't have time to get on YouTube. Right. I want to listen to it on podcast form. By all means, just search nap nose Buffalo. Yep. All right, perfect. I think that's our our only PSA that we need. So I guess let's kick it over to our conversation with Meerkat, and we're doing season predictions for the Bills. Oh, and then also tune in after that because we'll be talking about the game after that. I guess I I don't know if I made that clear or not, but our game predictions, our, our game preview, that's all happening after we talk with Meerkat. All right, let's welcome on a very special guest. We have Meerkat from Trainwreck Sports. Uh, We are going to be doing predictions uh, for the season. We have four predictions each, but before we do that, I want to talk about R2 Dart 2. How is R2 Dart 2 doing right now? So R2 Dart 2 was in the midst of a crazy heater. It was eight straight wins. He was like seven and one in his past eight baseball underdogs because we were getting a lot of baseball on the board, obviously. Now the couch football is here and such, but he was on fire. Then we suffer a brutal loss the other night. So we said, you know, take a couple days off, get ready for the football season. Mm-hmm. But we're riding hot right now. I mean, it's kind of crazy what he's doing. We're almost at 20 units, over 20 units, you know, a cumulative total. It's it's a dart, guys. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're riding the hot hand, the dart's the hot hand. You got to ride it like that. You, you go with the hot hand there. Is that is that the only way that you're making bets? Is you only placing the one bet per day or you you just no. throw another bets out there? Because Casey and I talked last year. I get into some bad gambling habits once I start get once I get going. So I just mm-hmm. stop for a little while, but I'm back in the game now and I'm going to just start off with my bad hand with my bad habits. Um, but like, yeah, how, how often are you placing bets right now? So right now it, it's mainly just like the juicy days. Sometimes a baseball player, something will really stick out to me during the week, but right now it's just college football, football, getting ready for that. Um, I'll be betting, you know, the full NFL slate pretty much every week. Is that responsible? Maybe not, but I can't let R2, you know, determine my future because at heart I'm a true degenerate. And so obviously R2 is the pinnacle of degeneracy, but I can't let him hold my future in his hands because he likes to drive me crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. some of the picks he makes, I hate and they end up winning and he he's better than me, but still I got to make my own plays. That can't feel great when you like you just know in your heart of hearts that the dart you're using is better than just your your own mind. 
it's not great. We really need football season to get here so I can start to bury him, show him what's up. But yeah. as of right now, like throughout the summer, all the weird sports and stuff, yeah, he, he's got me crushed. Absolutely. It's well, well, you know, I'll do an R2 Dartu pick. I'll hate it because he'll drive me crazy with the pick. And then we'll do a DDZ. I'll give out my actual picks. And my picks will go like one and two, and R2 hits a plus 180 underdog. It's nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I mentioned before we started, I have, I'm have i getting back in the gambling game and I have a bad idea of how I'm going to do it. Um, I mentioned this to Casey already, and he doesn't like the idea. Casey, oh, well, you, were, you were just not a fan of it? It's uh, I'm all it's about risky. making money, right? I'm all about making money. Uh, I'm a degenerate, Meerkat, if you didn't Let's know. Go. Um, I'm a big degenerate. The name, the name is cash out for a reason he does Um, not cash out though (laughs) i do i do cash out i do cash out a lot um no i'm i'm excited for the for the football season um in fact i I placed a bet today and kyle decided to be like hey you're you're about that money i'm not about that money don't tell my wife so uh, i'm excited about it and we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about one pick i like and i'll get your i'll get your opinion on it but uh kyle his I guess it'll be it's, fun. It would be great fan I'm, engagement. I'm hoping that it's going to be some engagement on the on what I'm doing. It, that's that's the goal it of it, honestly. Will be. It there we go. Will be. So so I'm going to be placing five bets every single Sunday. Just I I can only bet NFL. If I bet college, I lose every like I'm terrible with college I football. I am. I would I would say I'm average with NFL. I wouldn't claim to be great by any means because no gambler actually is. Um, but. My plan is I'm going to pick four out of my own. You do a bets. show with a legend, and you're going to say no gambler is actually Who? really good at me. Who? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? No gambler is really great. No, you just suck at gambling. No, continue, continue talking about what you're talking about. I, look, I was – yeah, whatever. I, I, am, I don't suck at gambling. I am just average. But I'm going to pick four out of my own five games, and then I'm going to put the fifth one to a Twitter vote. And I'm going to pick four games or four plays – and just let the people decide. Whatever they end up deciding, that'll be my fifth pick. And I'm just gonna ride with it every week. If they pick something I hate, so be it. That's what's going that's what I'm betting. I mean, nothing ever went wrong betting with the public, right? Right. Yeah, yeah uh, nothing ever goes yeah. wrong that way. Yeah. I'm going to <laughs> love that. I'm going to purposely pick um what I know is gonna be the loser on that I, I every hope you single do. week. <laughs> Every single week, do not fade me. <laughs> do not fade me. Uh, so, Meerkat, this was this was my must bet pick of the week, right? It was Tampa Bay's money line, right? They're playing the Cowboys. That's that's an easy. Let's let's get it right. Uh, yep. And then the second one was actually Buffalo minus six and a half. Um, I was I was actually kind of nervous about one, that one. I was waiting for the line to drop a little bit. It never did drop. It stayed steady at minus six and a half. Um, mm-hmm. But then you start seeing like the Steelers, their defense. Like there's a couple of people missing from the defense. Um, and then of course you have um, Watt, baby Watt on the edge, who might not play because he hasn't practiced all off season because he's trying to get a new contract. So a couple of those factors, I was like, you know what? Let's let's let it ride. I'm thinking the first games at the end, 27 to 13. But I parlayed those together and I dropped a cool 200 on it. So oh, I didn't think you were going to put the money out there. 500. There we go. Hopefully money we're going to coming my way. So I, I think that's the must bet, right? The Bucks definitely mm-hmm. going to win, and I honestly think the Bills are going to come out twenty-seven. It's going to be twenty-seven to fourteen at the end, whatever. Um, and the Bills are going to win, so that's that's definitely a must. I guess it's a no, good thing I that your wife that. doesn't listen to this, right? She doesn't. She doesn't give a shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's my must bet. Yeah, the Bills minus six and a half. It's not a homer play for me. It's a must bet play. I'm right there yeah. with you on that. Straight up parlay it with everything you want, what you can imagine. I mean, just looking at it with Pittsburgh's front seven. I mean, they're strong, but now a lot, maybe not playing. They're so thin at corner, especially nickel corner. And he yeah. got Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders. So good luck there. And just obviously the most overrated team of 2020. I mean, most people mm-hmm. figure that out by the second half of the season. I I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of Big Ben on his diet. What, do you lose like 15 pounds? Looks a little <laughs> slim. Like he's going to be in a walking boot by week two. Uh, yeah. Najee Harris. I, I love Najee. Don't get me wrong. Like he could be a Derrick Henry-esque guy, a little more burst, whatever. But that offensive line, man, is a joke right it's now. It's awful. Between, yeah. between Big Ben getting abused at what, like 42 years old? I'm not sure his exact age right now. It just feels like he's around that point. And uh, Najee 
you know, being thrown in now as the star running back. It, it's just I, I'm not too f- faithful in Pittsburgh this year as much nah. as I like that AFC North. I mean, they got it's a tough a, We were talking about that, actually. It came up briefly. What you mentioned, Big Ben, you're not scared of him. Somebody in the Buffalo <laughs> Fanatics chat that we have, they were saying that, like, oh, we have, like, we got to worry about a healthy, rested Big Ben. And I was like, like, and all due respect to them, like, I, I don't care about that. I'm not worried about mm-hmm. him. He's old Big Ben. He's not, like, young, prime Big Ben. It's a very different Big Ben that you're getting, even though he mm-hmm. is healthy. Like, yeah, he'll make a couple plays, fine. He's not going to like go out and destroy the Bills, especially with the offensive line that they have right now. Like, I'm just not mm-hmm. worried about him. Yeah, I'm more worried about the receivers. I mean, if you can get it into their hands, a guy like Deontay Johnson after the catch, I mean, he could definitely Yuck. hurt you. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, he, I, I've, I've talked about it. I'm not the biggest fan of Levi Wallace's CB2. I'm not a hater, though. Um, and you know, that's something that, that could scare you a bit in that type of matchup, seeing him go against some of these receivers, whether it's Washington or, you know, whoever with Pittsburgh and now they're tight end room a little better. So you're going to want to see our linebackers really step it up this year. Um, I know everybody is down on, uh, oh man, why am I forgetting his name right now? They're backup tight end who was with Indy for a while, but, uh, now they have Pat Freermuth and, Oh, they, they have weapons. Yeah, they have weapons on offense. If Big Ben can get them the ball, if that offensive line can stay even stable, but their secondary is so questionable right mm-hmm. now. It's the cornerback room just not great. So I don't have fear. Like I'm going in confident to a week one Bills game, and it feels weird, especially at a minus six and a half, which yeah. hasn't moved in yeah. weeks since it's been out. Yeah. It should it should terrify me, but I'm not. I'm riding in feeling great i'm ready to ride with these bills and you're talking about like picks that you really like uh let alone just like betting week one for a future the bills over 11 wins open a 10 and a half which i got it at i'm taking it again at 11 i mean it's getting a bit juiced now like minus 130 because people are seeing that and yeah we talk about being a homer making bets but it's different this year because the bills are actually legitimately good and you see every local radio analyst guy beat reporter whoever I don't think anyone's taking them below 12 wins. And I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll maybe talk about that, but like, I don't see them below like 13 this year. So when you see a number like 11 at worst, all I'm seeing is a push and that is worth it for mm-hmm. a future that you can get at minus minus one thirty, where it could just be so free. I, I love that play. Yeah. I mean, so, you got to take the chance on that. So yeah. I, I got a question before we actually get into the podcast last year, when I started doing, um, my own podcast, you know, the real podcast, not the nap, no, <laughs> Buffalo, but no one like, no one liked, I'm just a, a, a summer guest that hasn't <laughs> gone home yet. Um, when I, when I was doing my own podcast, which was just gambling 24 seven, um, I said like one of the first podcasts, it was like, Hey, I'm not going to pick the bills every single time. Right. You might see it like a plus six and you're like, well, that, that's mm-hmm. a good one. Right. I'm going to take them. And then as the season wore on, I don't think there was a game where I didn't like Buffalo's odds against the spread. Like, did, mm-hmm. did you feel like that as well last year? Because it was like there were mm-hmm. sometimes like there was the, the Las Vegas game. I remember it specifically because I was looking at that game when I was talking about I'm not going to take it. And I think that was like plus three. And I was like, I kind of like Las Vegas, blah, blah, blah. They might they might get plus mm-hmm. three. You know, that might be it. But the, I don't think there's one game where I was like, well, I don't like the spread against Buffalo. I'm going to pick Buffalo. So. No, I was 100% there with you. I was taking the spread pretty much every single week. I mean, their their money line, whether it was good odds or you can bet it straight up or just thrown into a parlay, was a yeah. weekly occurrence, you know, after week three. Like, yeah. That's when we really bought into mm-hmm. this team. We're like, okay, these guys are a weapon. They're lethal. They're going to compete. And, you know, the books didn't catch up for a while. And then Buffalo was still getting some really disrespectful yes. lines for them. And you can get Buffalo to value last year and – I just, why would I bet against them in any situation? There was no game last year. I didn't think they had a chance to win, especially that second half of the season where yeah. I was taking them every which way I could. I was at that point, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to win my money line or my spread bet. So let's have some fun betting some first touchdown scores or something. A yeah, little Lee yeah. Smith plus 2,000. I'll take that. Like, you yeah. know, so they made it fun gambling last year. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be another year that, that, you're going to be able to win a lot of bets betting on the bills, which is, I mean, didn't used to be able to say that. So it's real. It's awesome that we can be a fan root for the team and then also gamble on them and root for them that way too. So I, I love that. So let's, well, yeah, let's like get Buffalo, into the, 
Sorry, no, I was no, going to say, ahead. like, I think sometimes I'm like, back to when my, you know, my dad gambling, calling up his bookie and stuff, say, like, the mid-2000s before I even knew what a spread was. And I'm just thinking, it would be so hard for me not to take, like, Buffalo plus 24 and a half against the Patriots week six of 2007 or something, you know? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. it would just be so hard not to do that because they're probably getting ridiculous numbers back then. You still want to be a homer, but now it's just so different. I love it. But sorry to interrupt you there. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. So let's let's transition to the actual prediction. So we are going to each make four predictions for the season. It was pretty open. You can make a prediction about whatever. It could be a player. It could be the team. It could be really whatever. Just Bills in general is the idea behind the prediction. So who do we want to do? At, you you give all four of your predictions, and we'll just go round robin that way. Or do we want to go each of us gives one and and go back to back to back? I'm down for back one. to back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Keep who wants to go first? Ooh, I'll go first because I did my homework. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah. So here, here's, the other thing. here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Is I we don't we don't do a whole lot of prep for this show, and it's it's not because like we think we don't need to or anything like that. It's just like it, we don't often have like a lot of statistical backing for like what we're saying. It's more opinion based. Like that that's what we do. We're we're better with that. And so when I ask Casey to prepare something. <laughs> nine times out of 10, it is not prepared, which is fine. He is much better off the cuff than I am. So I'm still like, I, I don't know if he actually prepared anything or not for this because he said he thought about it, but I also I know Casey. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know where he's going with this whatsoever, or how he's going to approach this at all. Let's see. All right. First off, are you wearing a chain right now? And a Looney Tunes t-shirt? Me? Looney Tunes? Yeah. Yeah. And a, and, a, and a chain. I'm digging the chain. Um, it's making your neck green, but that's neither here nor there. So not my prediction. The neck green. <laughs> my Probably prediction, should, but it's not. <laughs> uh, my prediction is Micah Hyde more than five interceptions this year. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to cross okay. that. I'm glad I prepared because I, I had a prediction about him too. And uh, I, I took it a step further. So – We'll leave that with your prediction. I actually predicted eight plus turnovers and defensive player of the year discussion, not winning, but discussion. But I'm not going to use that as my official prediction because you already used Micah Hyde and it was I did. similar. Yes. I like that one though. I mean, he is the Definitely general prepared. defense. So I like that one. Yeah, the general of defense. He's always in the mix. He's a ball hawk. He's going to be looking. He is a ball hawk. He's going to. I mean, it's not just interceptions. You know, there's a ball loose on the ground. Anything. He's going to be involved in that Mm -hmm. uh, all over the field. You love. It's just hard not to root for Mike Hyde. I mean, he could pull out something spectacular at any time. You think about the onside recover for a touchdown. I mean, that just replays in my head and gets me hyped. Yeah, I mean that one. That one had me feeling some type of way when he did that. Yeah. All right, Meerkat, you want to go with your first? All right, my first is going to be Gabriel Davis leads the Buffalo Bills receivers in uh, receiving touchdowns this year with at least 10 touchdowns. And I just love Davis this year. He's the true number two coming into this season behind Diggs, in my opinion. He was second in snaps last year, even though it took him a while to get, you know, caught on in that offense. Um, Catch rate to begin the season was a bit low, but now he's established himself as an elite playmaker along the sidelines as a red zone threat. He was second on the team in touchdowns last year as a rookie. Like I said before, he had the trust built up when he was fairly an unknown, even though he had a good camp. So now coming to this year, even with Sanders addition, I think Gabriel Davis leads the way in terms of red zone scoring for us, touchdowns for the receivers. Love him this year. I like that one a lot because of the red zone scoring, because like, mm-hmm. you know, in between the twenties, Diggs, Beasley, even probably Emmanuel Sanders, like they're going to be getting a lot of targets, but once you get like into the red zone, you need to have that bigger body receiver. And we talked about it last week, how Casey thinks that a lot of people think it's going to be Jake Kumaro. I don't, I why? don't think why that. Did, why do we bring him up? He's, I have to, he, I have to, nothing. I have to egg he you means a nothing. little bit. He means nothing. We, uh, we're talking about him. Gabe. Uh, thank you. We're, we're talking about sweet Gabe. baby boy Isaiah Hodgins spot. We're, we're talking about Gabriel Davis, and you want to throw in Jake Kumaro? No one cares about it. He won't no, ever see the what, field. What I was, um, was going to say was I like the fact that it like 
give Gabriel Davis that chance because he's like he's shown that he can make the plays. I didn't expect him to play as well as yeah. he did already during the preseason. I thought he was going to be like, okay, well, he'll be like a good number four. I actually think that he could probably push to be like that number three wide receiver this year behind yeah. Diggs and Beasley. So I don't, I don't hate the idea of him leading the team with touchdowns, especially when you look at last year, Diggs had – eight i think beasley what did it yeah. beasley probably had five or six I like beasley was at five yeah, yeah. and then like we, we lost spreads a the ball decent amount of touchdowns too you know between you know guys like croft and lee smith and stuff we lost mm-hmm. nine total touchdowns from this receiving unit so th- there are some red zone opportunities up for grabs and he just showed it last year it's he, he it came out of nowhere but he kind of carries a presence with himself on the field where he's confident he's physical he's athletic he's kind of combining it all where he's not particularly excelling at anything but he knows he can get it done and he's going to make the play yeah I I like that one a lot so my first one I'm going to the defensive side of the ball I have I I really like what the Bills can do in the pass rush and I wanted to go with double digit sacks but I I just wasn't there yet so I have Ed Oliver AJ Epinesa Greg Rousseau and Jerry Hughes all getting six or more sacks so they could end up going higher, but I think because you're in a rotation, like they're they're not gonna necessarily get to those double digits. Most likely, it's possible. Yeah, you never know. But I do I don't see that happening. But I think they all have the potential with the way they rotate, with what we've seen so far from them. With Rousseau, looks like he could potentially be an animal. He might start slow. That's fine. But if he gets up to speed the way he looks like he could. There, that's a problem for opposing offenses. Same thing with Epinesa. He looks like he's just a totally different player at this point, which makes mm-hmm. sense because they sent him through his whole body transformation. But I, I may, I'm real excited for a year two with him. And then you just kind of know what you're going to get with Jerry Hughes. And I think Ed Oliver being back in his actual pass rushing defensive tackle position, you give him some more chances to just mm-hmm. get after the quarterback with some actual dudes on the edges now. I think that's going to cause some real problems and give him some a lot of opportunities. He, If I had to pick two of them to get to double digits, I'd probably go Epinesa and uh, Ed Oliver, but I'm not going to go as far as to say that any of them will. I got them all going six or more sacks, though. So a uh, good thing we made backups for this because I'll just bounce off of yours real quick with one that I, I was going to give out, and that was no bill has double-digit sacks, but the team finishes as a top 10 overall sacks per, for a team uh, this year. Last year, no bill finished with double-digit sacks, obviously. Mm-hmm. I think Madison, Addison and Klein led the way with five, Hughes at four and a half. Sad. And, yeah, and so you look at that, you're a bit sad, but when you look at like the pass rushing numbers, the hurries, the hits, the efficiency, the numbers, especially for a guy like Hughes, you see people see the four and a half and want to crucify him. And then when you really break it down, he, he's one of the most effective pass rushers in the league. He's in the backfield. He's pressuring the quarterback. He's just not finishing. And so, you know, I think with the depth we've added, you brought up Epinesa's transformation, a spark plug type player like Rousseau, and then Star Latoulay coming back on that defensive line, you know, kind of eating up some bodies, especially helping Oliver, who you brought up, who I think is going to have a monster year as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, the depth is there. They rotate so much, but now it's quality depth. Guys who can actually get to the quarterback. F.A. Obata might be your fifth defensive end coming in, and this is a guy who had – five and a half sacks on like 250 pass rush snaps last year. So I think you get a lot of sacks out of this defense, but I agree with you where I don't think anybody really gets the snaps unless they're truly, truly shining to break that 10 number. Yeah. And I think it they would, it would probably have to be, I mean, it wouldn't be Rousseau most likely. That would be insane. If a yeah. rookie is getting double digit sacks, we saw just last year, Chase Young had what, like seven or eight sacks and he was a monster at that point. So I just don't see Rousseau going uh, like above and beyond that. I think he probably is the last one to get to that six number that I have, but I think he has like all the potential in the world to get there, which I know Casey would back because Rousseau was his guy. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I zoned out there for a minute. And I was you're, like, you're good. About, you're what's, good. He gonna <laughs> what's he going to do? Your, it's your pick. Um, it's your pick. I got four <laughs> hours of sleep last night. Um, I need to. <laughs> I have a two month old, and like when she goes oh, yeah. to sleep, I have to learn. I have to learn. I have to go to sleep, but I don't take advantage. Of fact, it. Let's 
let's let's get off topic. I have a lot of homework that I should be doing, like researching players for the 20, uh, 2022 draft, stuff like that. Um, but mm-hmm. instead, I'm watching Fallout New Vegas playthroughs on YouTube. I love and, that game. Like, love right, it. Best thank Fallout. you. Thank you. I so I'm like four <laughs> yesterday just for a little. Right? I a little thank escape. you. I haven't played a while. Uh, Fallout guy. Let's go. I, same. Same. We'll talk offline about it. So I'm watching, I'm watching Fallout New Vegas, and all of a sudden, I look at the clock. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh. Oh, I got to go to sleep. Ooh. So I go to go to sleep. Guess who wakes up? My daughter. So I was like, mm. great. Awesome. And then I didn't get her back to sleep until three. But that's neither here nor there. And we, we woke up at seven because somebody was hungry. But um, anyway, so I'm zoned out a little bit. Um, my prediction, because I definitely, 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 definitely <laughs> did my homework, was that Stefan Diggs leads the league in receptions. Not yards, receptions. I think. Okay. I like that. Last year. Yeah. Last year, it came down to him and uh, Keenan Allen, right? That was a big mm-hmm. one. Uh, Michael Thomas is another guy that can lead the league in, in receptions, but with him being injured and being out, I think it comes down to Keenan Allen or Stefan Diggs. Now, of course, you can always play devil's advocate and turn around and be like, well, we have so many weapons, he's going to spread the ball around. Well, Diggs is still Diggs, right? Diggs is going to be open nine times out of ten, right? Mm-hmm. So Diggs will probably lead the league in receptions this year. That's my bold prediction. Is it a bold prediction? If it's I don't even think through? that's a bold. I think that's just a I don't think so either. prediction, which that's is fine. That's yeah. a regular. Yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact, Jack. All right. I, I love that. That just I mean, sounded right coming from you. <laughs> what? That's a fact, Jack. That just sounded my right wife, coming from you. My wife hates it when I tell her that. <laughs> Never ride in this household. She doesn't listen to this podcast. Who cares? All right. This is where you get to complain. No, I, I like that one, though. He's going to get all the targets in the world just because he is as good as all the other receivers are. He is just that much better than them to the point where he is the go-to guy. If, if Allen's in trouble, throw it up to Diggs. It's okay. Like We're comfortable with that type of play at this point. So I, I like that one. Um, Before you move on, I want to look up. Um, how many receptions he had last year? Wasn't it 127? I think uh, it was 120 something. Last year, I have the stuff up right here. It was 127 receptions. Let's go. Right on the nose. There we go. <laughs> Whew, from so, too. <laughs> so, so, what's the over under? Right? He's going to have more than 120, right? How's, uh, what, I think, what's I think it? it's probably right around 120. Yeah, I wonder what the numbers at. I could see it at like a one nineteen and a half or something, where people are like, they're you know the side where they think he builds on last year, the side where they think he mm-hmm. regresses, and where he stays right at the same. I wouldn't be Visible. shocked, honestly, though, to see if if the actual if they like I don't I haven't even looked to see what an over under on that is. I wouldn't be shocked to see it at like one oh five, just because you it's hard to duplicate that year over year. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say one hundred thirty four receptions. Yes. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna even put a number on it. I'm I like that. We'll make sure that's on the graphic. On We're gonna put that on the graphic. 134 receptions for Stephon. 134. Diggs All right, Mirka, are you ready for your second prediction? I am, but I would like to just say I did look it up. If you saw okay. me squinting, sorry, I'm blind. Diggs's regular season receptions over under from DraftKings is set at 106 and a half. Oh, bro, did, take did it. I say 105? <laughs> Did I say oh, 105? Buddy. Yeah. Uh, you're trash. No way. I'm, I am, I'm on the money right now. I'm feeling even better about my picks this weekend. <laughs> I love it. But uh, my next one, another one where it's not like a crazy hot take, but it's kind of expecting a guy to really show out this year. Devin Singletary is going to have over 1,100 rushing plus receiving yards. I'm a huge guy for Singletary this year, him earning that RB1 spot and you know, you got to say, earn it with a little quotes and Zach Moss getting hurt. Pretty much, you know, handed it to him this offseason, but he looked great in the preseason. He put in the work. I mean, you love to see the Jack picture of Singletary. Every time Judge Mathis tweets it, I, I love it. Love it. It's an automatic Let's, let's tweet. talk about Steve. He's an idiot. No one likes him. <laughs> Move <Yeah>. on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a guy who rookie year 969 combined and 956 last year. And last year he was down, but now this year he's coming in clear-cut RB1, even though Moss is there, Brita, who I don't see having much of a role at all. I know people are all over the place on that. I'm not even sure, but he gets that 200 to 230 touch range, which he's right near, just needs a little extra boost. He's going to hit that with, you know, the averages he's had the past two years. I don't care what anyone says. Last year was an abnormality rushing for him. Uh, 
who is going to succeed averaging 1.5 yards before contact rushing other mm-hmm. than like Derek Henry, the offensive line. There's some continuity now there. They're used to the systems, the same guys pretty much, and they're ready to roll. So I like Singletary feeling comfortable RB one to have a big bounce back year. 1100 rushing plus receiving is not too much to ask for it all out of him and he can do it. So I like him a lot. I think, you know, his receiving could play a big uh, part in that. People are down on his receiver for when he drops a screen here or there, which terrible look, but he definitely got better as a receiver by nearly like five and a half percent catch percentage on more targets last year. So it's not like he's getting worse at that. He decent yards per uh, after the catch. So I like Singletary to have a nice little year as that RB one. I for a second at the beginning of that I thought you were gonna just yeah, go strictly same. rushing yards and I was no, gonna crush you for I that. Can't. I can't. <laughs> Be, like I like Singletary. I think I think like a lot of Give the me similar things where four hundred. Yeah, I think I think that's very Bro. much a possibility. Bro, but I, I was, thought you were I gonna was, go strict rushing yards. And I was gonna crush no, no, you for that. No, I was, no, no, I love him, but not that. I'm realist. Yeah, I was. I was waiting for Kyle to get done because I was gonna say, "Hey, I'll take it a step farther." I think he gets 750 plus rushing, and then he gets about 300 plus receiving. I was gonna say yeah. that, and then you you had a you had to just. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'll forgive you this time, but I, I agree. I think he will. He's a weapon. He's a weapon yeah, out of the backfield. He is. He is. I, I, last year, I think was just an abnormality for him. I don't expect yeah. it to be the same. I, I think even if the even if Spell the offensive line is able to not off the top of my head, even if the <laughs> offensive line is able to block just a little bit better, like they don't even have to be that much better, he still has the ability to make a, like that extra man miss to get another mm-hmm. yard or two per carry because he. It seems like he's always making the first guy miss, and if he yep. if they can just let him do that in front of the line of scrimmage instead of behind the line of scrimmage. That gives him a lot more chances because we know if it's behind the line of scrimmage, his speed comes into play a little bit more. If he gets mm-hmm. in front of the line of scrimmage before he meets that first guy, then he, that's when he really, really excels. So I, I like the, that one too. My my next prediction is going to probably be one that people are not real excited about. Um, oh, no. and they'll probably think that this is just a stupid one. That's okay. I... <laughs> We talked about this last week, and actually, we talked about this. This this was like a, a Twitter thing over the past week. I I will say I'm not a Dawson Knox truther. I said that on Twitter. I mean it. I'm not a Dawson Knox truther. I don't ever expect him to be a superstar tight end. However, in this offense, with him being the only tight end who's going to be active, because we know Reggie Gilliam, he's the he's like that pseudo fullback tight end, third tight end kind of guy. They're not really going to use him in that role as much. Dawson Knox is the guy at tight end right now. I think he takes that next step at the tight end position in his third year, and I think he goes for 500 receiving yards, five touchdowns. Nothing insane. It's not like an out-of-the-world, out-of-the-realm-of-possibilities type of thing. No. Because all he has to do is continue to improve his drop rate, which he has. I think he was at 20% his uh, rookie year. He got it down to 10% last year. Only actually had four drops all of last year. I know there's a whole catch rate thing, too. He's, he needs to improve that, but that's more of a chemistry thing, I think, with him and Josh as opposed mm-hmm. to strictly him. Um, so I think that, that'll that improve as well. Doesn't have to improve a whole lot, but as long as he starts to conti- – well, continues to show the growth that I think he has, at least a little bit. Like, we all want to see more. We know that. But I expect yeah. him to be able to do even more – then I think a lot of people would expect this year. And it's not going to be great. It doesn't have to be. But 500 yards, five receiving touchdowns, that would be way above and beyond expectations, I think. Can we can we take that a step further? Because um, I think five touchdowns, uh, it's pretty – it's pretty low for Dawson Knox. And uh, Meerkat, I don't, I don't know about you, but last year, Knox was one of my guys. I did a lot of player props, mm-hmm. right? Josh Allen mm-hmm. for over 250. They they had his set ridiculous low, but that's neither here nor there. But Keep going, by Dawson, the way. My my charger is gone, so I'm going to leave the screen for a second. I got to charge okay, the laptop. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool, All right, cool, you're cool, good. cool. Dawson Knox became one of my favorite um, anytime touchdown scorers for the yep. Bills last year. So. Mm-hmm. And it was it was near the end of the season. Josh was looking his way quite a bit in the end zone. Um, I know he didn't have how many touchdowns did he have last year? Four or five. He didn't yeah. he, he didn't have a lot, but Josh was going his way near the end of the year. And mm-hmm. I think that continues this year. So I don't want to say I don't want to say he gets double digits, 
But I, I would actually honestly want to tack on at least two more touchdowns to that. I, I would say 500 plus yards and seven touchdowns, seven or more touchdowns. Um, just because Josh was going his way consistently near the end of the year. So I'm going to have two half predictions, I guess, now, because I'm my backup bounces off map here. We, we got similar <laughs> brains. One of mine was uh, Dawson Knox's catch rate over 60% this year. I think he takes that little jump he needs. I, I like know you that. brought that up just there. Uh, like we can, said, we can leave that on, that honestly. On. That's different enough than yeah. what I have. If you want to leave that on, yeah, that's I'm fine. Cool with that. I, we already yeah. took your first backup, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that was my other backup, and now so you know a lot of confidence going into him this off season. They only kept two tight ends. I know technically it's really three with Gilliam. He's H back guy, whatever you mm-hmm. want to call him. It, it's like two and a half tight ends. Sure, Tommy Sweeney. I love the story of him coming back after what he dealt with last year is incredible. I love his hands, decent athleticism, decent blocker. Sure, but now Dawson's gonna be the focal point, and he look, you know. Freaking Lee Smith had three touchdowns last year. Tight end in the yeah. red zone is something Brian Dable is going to want to abuse. Dawson Knox coming into his third year. I think he's got that confidence boost now. He's got the chemistry with Allen. It's about that summer with QB or t- QB you tight end you. Uh, you saw him working a lot actually individually with Greg Olson, who had high praise for Knox. I know that's whatever you can say whatever about that because they're not going to say he's bad. But you know something like that helps build your confidence. It's good work to get in from a you know savvy vet, one of the legends at your position. Now he's a focal point of the offense, so he's got to improve on I think fifty six percent of fifty four percent last year then for his catch rate get him that 60 percent catch rate make him a focal point in the red zone Dawson Knox is going to be important to this offense this year how big do you think or, or how high do you think his confidence just soared when um Hollister was cut it's not that it was oh, yeah. a bad thing but like mm-hmm. to know like hey you're you're our guy like you're our tight end you know what I'm saying? You're our number one tight end. It's like, uh, you know, getting rid of Cam. He can't be the backup because that will, you know, always make mm-hmm. uh, old Matt Jones look over his yep. shoulder. Now, now Dawson, who's who's he looking his shoulder? Is it is it Sweeney? Is No, he has no one to look out for, right? Mm-hmm. So right now he is the number one guy. So his confidence has got to be through the roof. I bet he yeah. shows and, out. Yep. I, I think he's going to have a much better year. Obviously, I wouldn't have predicted this if I didn't. I think he's probably still going to have some of those – like he's, we're still going to be fighting that drop issue a little bit. Like he's going to have some here and there. We know that every player does when he has his, they're going to be a bigger deal because of his rookie year and how bad it was then. So all I'm hoping for is that his drops don't come in those big time moments like they have in the past. If he can just change when the drops happen, really like if four drops in a year, I will take that every single time. If that's all he's going to have, if he can just change the moments that they come that would be great. <laughs> the one thing with Dawson Knox, too, I don't know if this is just me. It seems like every time he gets a catch where he's got a little space to work with after, he's falling over the defender. Like, mm-hmm. it's a weird thing. Like, he is always – they're going for his legs. He's a big target. He's an athletic, strong guy out there. You, defenders are intimidated by him. You see it. They go for his leg. He ends up just falling over them or whatever. But he's fought for those extra yards at times and stuff. And. You just that extra bit of confidence, you know, you see him have a good couple weeks to start the year. I think you're going to see a beast emerge. That would, I, I, that would really help the offense, obviously. If you can yeah, get a oh, yeah. really good tight end, as much as they don't use the tight end as much as a lot of people would want them to, if you get a really good tight end, it's going to help the offense. Like, no doubt about it. Is it my, is it my turn or is it Casey's? I think it's my what turn. Are you? Is it yours? All right. Yeah. Um, Sean McDermott, coach of the year. Okay. It's going to be hard for him to get coach of the year, um, Mm -hmm. but you got to think what happens if – so we're all in agreement right here. We all think Buffalo is the Super Bowl favorite, right? Mm -hmm. Take Take out the homerisms and all that good stuff. Buffalo's kind of the Super Bowl favorites, right? We look across the board. There's a couple other people that can compete with them, but they're at least the top top four team. Top three. Yeah, top top three. three. So, so in that consideration, you got to think they're a Super Bowl contender, right? Or, and they're a favorite to win the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. So what happens if Sean McDermott wins the Super Bowl, right? Well, look at the resume, what he's done for Buffalo. I think that right there would kind of put him into consideration for Coach of the Year. So I think that's his only really chance of getting Coach of the Year is if Buffalo wins uh, the so Super Bowl. My, my only issue with that is that the Coach of the Year is picked right after the regular season, so none, nothing yeah. oh, from the playoffs yeah. matters. So – I, I, I consider this, 
and this is a discussion that we had towards the end of last year, like on the pregame show with Buffalo Fanatics a lot because everybody was talking about, oh, is Sean McDermott going to win or is it going to be Kevin Stefanski last year? And this, I mean, this is your prediction. We're putting it out there that like it is what it is. I'm just going to have to say, I like I can't go on without saying, I unfortunately disagree with it because I think you have to be one of the coaches who not necessarily comes out of nowhere, but you can't have really had that much prior success. And Sean McDermott has now had three out of four years coaching where Mm -hmm. he's had that prior success. So I think he, the bills would have to have an extraordinary year, like 15 and two Yep, or 16 and one for him to get there. If they go 13 and four, I don't think that's going to cut it because I think there's going to be somebody else out there who gets like a, a average team to be above average. But it's going to take a really good year, like a hell of a year from the Bills for it to happen. It's not impossible by any means, but I think that's a tougher well, prediction to come true. I was trying to look up because I felt like Mike Tomlin had won Coach of the Year multiple times, but I don't think he did. I think. Mm-hmm. The last time he won Coach of the Year was 2009. What was – Tomlin has, has never worn the NFL Coach of the Year. I guess not. Huh. Why did I think Mike Tomlin had won the Coach of the Year multiple times? Just There's he's a, a coach. Really, I thought he did two, like, he's first so, or second year because well, he came he's out had a so lot of, hot. Yeah. He's had a lot of success. I, yeah. He's, well, he's, he's a really good own. coach. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know we're playing the Steelers this year, right? But all, all jokes aside, Mike Tomlin is probably one of the best coaches in the NFL. There's a reason why he's been the coach mm-hmm. of the Steelers for, you know, 15 oh, yeah. years. He took a team led by Duck Hodges, right, and had them, what, did they go to the playoffs or almost in playoff contention or, or whatever? I mean, that's just that's, – that's a lot. Duck Hodges sucks no matter what PFF has to say. <laughs> um, but – I thought Mike Tomlin had won multiple times. No, it's going to be very tough for Sean McDermott, but I do believe Mm -hmm. he will get it. Yeah, it's it's tough. You got to have like an immaculate season. I feel like coming off of a season like the Bills did, because that's an award we talked about on Free Money Football, uh, one of the shows I do through DDZ when we were doing futures, where they really like the favor. You know, the new guy coming in and saving the shitty franchise. Yeah, that's why I think maybe Joe Staley is the favorite right now with the Chargers coming in. Um, guys like that, but you know, McDermott goes 15 and two clinches the first round by how can you say no to that? And another thing they might factor in this year is how a coach really, really coaches and manages his players, especially, you know, with all the <laughs> they won't. going on guys, miss, you know, <laughs> so like that might come into a, a little bit of a mind of a voter here and there too. So we'll see how that goes, but well, you, I, I like that. I mean, he's, he's one of the I best think, coaches in the I league think and he deserves recognition. He does. He what? definitely deserves recognition. I think the chance for him to get coach of the year was either last year or the year before. Mm-hmm. Or I mean, even I mean, he'll never get. The, you'll never win Coach of the Year at nine seven. But that first year when he actually got yeah. that team, that was that was just crazy. But yeah. he Who also else? had that really big blunder. I think it's it's either it, either it's Staley or Ron Rivera in Washington. Yeah, because yeah. neither of those teams have had that. Uh, Belichick's one of the front runners as well. I think he's like four. Yeah, I spots. yeah, which would I mean, be crazy. He hasn't. Well, he's only won the award once or maybe twice or has he ever even won it that's the that's the thing that it feels like he's won it a ton multiple times, but he also yeah. like he's they've just always been good so it's the expectation and that's what like i think i don't think it's the success that's going to be the issue for mcdermott i think it's the fact that they are one of the super bowl favorites so it's hard to pick that coach going in like oh you did what was expected yeah. to like they have to really go above and beyond and have that 15 16 17 win season. No, so I, I 100%. yeah. Yeah. So my third prediction is I'm going to, I'm going to avoid going with a player on this one too. I'm going to go with the GM, Brandon Bean. I got Brandon Bean pulling off an important mid season trade. I don't know what that trade is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be because there is a position that's a little bit down or whether there's an injury that he's filling in for, whatever it may be, if he's trading for a new CB2, I know a lot of people really want that to happen. I don't know if that would be the place that's going to happen. Maybe it's the nickel corner, whatever. Mm. Whatever it may be, I got Brandon Bean pulling off a midseason trade that ends up being important. doesn't have to be a superstar player. 
but it just has to be a guy who's important, who contribute, who contrib- contributes, whoa, contributes to the team. No, I can see that. Whether it's someone like, say, we're all we're all high on him, but say Dawson Knox starts the season dropping the ball a lot or something like that, they could be looking at uh, you know bringing mm-hmm. a tight end, which they did this all season. Cornerback two is obviously something that comes to mind. Where if Levi's struggling early, which I I, I don't see. I, I just I don't see him as like a top tier guy. I don't feel a hundred percent comfortable with him as my CB two, but I don't hate it. I like Levi. He's good. Um, but yeah, like a move like that, something, or like you said, injury, who knows yeah. what can happen with this team, uh, offensive line. If we lose, you know, Deion Dawkins or Daryl Williams, Brandon Bean better be calling somebody. Or either because, guard. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Like anyone on the offensive line, mm-hmm. other than center, I guess we could, we can make do if Morse got hurt. We, we've made do before, but there, yeah. there are some concerns losing a piece. Like I won't, don't want Josh Allen going out there with, you know, Spencer Brown. I, I said that last week, and it's no disrespect to Spencer Brown. Exactly. Like I think Not he's yet. going, to, sounds, I think he's going sounds, to be good. But I literally like said that last week. Is I just yeah. I'm just not comfortable if it's if it's honestly either side. I'm just not comfortable with Spencer Brown being the guy protecting Josh Allen yet. Mm-hmm. I just want to give him a little bit more time. So something like that would like I wouldn't hate seeing a trade for backup like offensive lineman somewhere. Like I, I don't hate that. So I think Brandon Bean could be the guy who pulls that off for really good value or even just average value. I I yeah. don't like to be the guy <laughs> to bring up a past topic, but I do want to say that I looked up the coach of the year options, right? Okay. Belichick has won it three times. When? Oh, okay. That's uh, when? surprising. When? He what won years? It. The so Brady I'll... staff infection for sure. Yeah, so the 2010 <laughs> was one of them. So 2010 was the last time. 2007 – um, and I want to I want to point out the 2010 Belichick went 14 and two. Um, that was the last time he won it, so uh, over 11 years ago. But this is what I want to. This is really what I want to point out, right? Ron Rivera with the Carolina Panthers went 15 and one, right? That was his second time winning the award. So that goes back to what Meerkat said. Hey, if they go 15 and two, there's no way they can uh, look back at that. The last coach that won it that was not his first year coaching was John Hawk. I can't. I can't pronounce that name. Please don't make John me pronounce Harbaugh. that name. There Harbaugh. it is. It's 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 a hard. I don't like it. Um, Johnny H. Uh, so John, the Ravens. Right. That was the last time he won. And I want to point out their record. It was fourteen and two. Right. Mm-hmm. So the way that Sean McDermott is going to win that is is if he goes fifteen and two, like Meerkat said. So props yeah. to Meerkat for bringing that up. But as far as the the executive of the year, it's going to be very interesting, right? Because how often does um, a Brandon Bean make a midseason trade right right before the deadline it has to be like the right deal for him to do that right, right? yeah it's so it has s- to be the right deal but that's why i think it, if he makes a deal it's because it's an important it, trade it's going to be make. an impact yeah. it's going to be an impactful player if he makes a deal right it's going to be one of those deals where it was like i couldn't say no we had to go out and get it this is our super bowl window so mm-hmm. You know, and it's going to be one of those risky moves too, where if it pays off, he's one hundred percent getting executive of the year. And if it doesn't, right? Well, I mean, he's probably going to get scrutinized for it. But how often does Brandon Bean make bad roster moves that we've seen so far? Yeah, not we're not as often as other guys. Like yeah, Hollister, what, what the only, Anthony Hollister Johnson? was tied in number one, and we cut him. <laughs> like getting rid of a guy like uh, Anthony Johnson or. Uh, What's his face? Logan uh, Wilson, the tight end. Logan and, uh, Thomas. Yeah. Thomas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thomas sorry. But, uh, which like, Logan you know, Thomas not, is the perfect you example really, of yeah. uh, – he's the perfect example of a guy who it took him years at tight end to get it figured out. But once he did, just exploded. Yeah. yeah. And now Tyree Jackson making that Eagles roster made enough of a show at tight end converting from quarterback. To, and, you know, the offseason injured and still make the roster mm-hmm. for them. They like him that much. Yeah. And then the other one obviously being Wyatt Teller. That was just a mess. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, you, he wasn't going to, like, there's the yeah. crazy thing is, even with those misses that he has, like, they're misses in hindsight. But yeah. at the time, it was like, it no, like, the, the trade yeah. seems like it makes sense. So, it, yeah. like, there's always that. But, like, back then it was whatever. So, I, there's very few trades or signings or cuts that he's made where I was like, like, what, what the hell are you doing? So, mm-hmm. that's always been, now. yeah. 
It's, it's yeah. so comfortable. Even during the draft when people were freaking out, DN, mm-hmm. DN, OT, OT. And it's just like, hey, I trust Brandon Bean. He's He's got a plan. He's putting it in motion. He's getting the guy he wants pretty much at any cost. He's got guys he wants all over. And mm-hmm. this offseason with, you know, Steven Nelson or uh, trading for Ertz, moves like that, he – he, he didn't get the move he wanted. He didn't get the value yeah. he wanted. He didn't see it. And I trust him with that. I'm not freaking out over that. So it's nice. <laughs> I mean, we were yeah. talking about just being high on the bills coming into week one and feeling the spread, like knowing it's going to hit. And then it's just nice knowing your GM, the moves he makes as much as you might scratch your head. You're going to be all right at the time. Yeah. I, I think we all have one prediction left, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. And I, is my last prediction. You go right? first. And I, I 100% did my homework for this episode now. Um, <laughs> As always, you you always do. This one, this one. So I thought I thought about, you know, just saying something stupid, right? Um, talking about Jake Kumaro or just throwing it out. But I actually wanted to, like, make a real prediction for this one. And I want to go Marquez Stevenson actually returning kicks. And I want to say he's going to return a total of five kicks this year, whether it's kickoff or whether okay, it's just punting. return them. I thought you were going returning just return kicks. them. Okay, <laughs> returning at least five for a touchdown, either punting or kickoff return. So combined, we can say combined. So okay. I think wait, you're going. Wait, so you are going for touchdowns? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought you were at first when you said it. I was like, oh, touchdowns. That's that's absolutely insane. And then you were like, just returning them. And I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> that, that, that's a good what, returning them for that touchdown. That was like a way of like, like oh, who's getting five returns is all right. I was what, like, okay, I'm not, like, I can definitely what, see that happening. <laughs> what do you think I meant by returning them for touchdowns, Nap? It just took a second for that to process again after you had said, no, just so, returning the kicks. It's the it's the Looney Tunes ter- uh, shirt. Um, but I would. I, That's I, insane. I would, I, I would. I would be remiss to not. I have. Rode, I love it, though. I've oh, rode man. Stevenson yeah. this whole offseason since he was drafted. I have. I've been his guy. And I've said multiple, multiple times that the reason why they drafted Stevenson was for him to return kickoffs. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the and and punts. That was the reason, whole reason why they drafted him was not because he was, you know, the greatest wide receiver out there. Right. It was because of special teams value. And I think we start to see that maybe not in the beginning of the season. Obviously, he's on IR, but I meant after he comes back. So week three and beyond, maybe we don't see it in the beginning of the season. But what if he's probably going to catch fire later on in the season? And I bet he returns. Two punts for a touchdown and at least three kickoff returns for a touchdown. So I'm I'm saying, yeah, I'm a little psychotic. Get used (laughs) to it. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's he's returning at least five total touchdowns. It's bold. I love it. I I hope it it happens. I think that's an NFL record, too. As a rookie, would would it be as a rookie? I think Devin Hester might have had – I, I think he might have ever broke six. four in his, or all oh, combined though. I think. Yeah, combined. I, I think he might have hit six yeah, one no, year. H- yeah, Hester, Hester's definitely. Which yeah, is hilarious combined. because I actually saw somebody the the Kumaro Stevenson post. I think it was that we put out earlier. Um, I think somebody might have commented on that, being like, "I think he had. I think Stevenson has a little Devin Hester in him." And I was like, I, "That I would love that if he does. Mm-hmm. That'd be incredible." So. You look at his college tape. I mean, the dude's yeah. absolutely electric. Any ball that he, you know, correctly fields, he has a chance to take back. So, I mean, it's not crazy. It, it's fun. It, it's a nice hot take there. I like that, definitely, because so, we want to see Marcus Stevenson be the returner, I feel like, over Isaiah McKenna. Ev- yeah, I mean, eventually, I want I want him to be that guy. I don't know if he's going to be this year or not, but mm-hmm. if, if, if McKenzie does end up having those fumbling issues like he's had in the past, if he continues that, which – all signs point to at some point he's going to like you, you got to give Stevenson a shot once he's healthy. So that'll be an Patrick, interesting one. Patrick Peterson in 2011 had four punt returns for a touchdown. Devin Hester in 2010 mm-hmm. and 2006 had three, right? So Didn't Terrence McGee have four in a year. He might have not, I think like not back punt. in like back in like 2004, no. it was kick returns. I wrote something about yes. him, Terrence McGee before. Yeah, McGee had like an unreal return yeah. season the one year. So the average kickoff return per per year by a player is two. That's the average, right? And then you want to go to um, – for the, for the leader. 
just just kickoffs, right? Difference between kickoffs and punts, right? So the average for the leader is two, right, per year, okay? And then you go to the punts. The average punt leader is, I can't remember, is three. So is sitting there saying that he's going to have three punts return for touchdown and three kickoff return for touchdown is bold, but I, I think not unreasonable. I think it, it's loony. That's what it is. It's loony. <laughs> you, 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 the loony's fun. We, we root for loony. So is that the boldest I love it, prediction though. ever? Is that the boldest prediction? I hope you're right. So far? I it's hope you're the right. Bold, realistic prediction I've heard. Yeah. Thank you, know, you Meerkat. Some people being like, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Josh Allen's thrown for 8,000 yards. And I'm like, all right, that'd be cool. Who could do it? Chill. <laughs> Chill. Chill. They're like, well, if he throws every pass and he hits this and he throws for 75 rounds, I'm like, okay, well, chill there bud because that's not happening but <laughs> that that's fun They're like yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's something that can happen i guess yeah yeah, it could i mean that that's yeah. like a it, it wouldn't even necessarily have to be a flash in the pan season you just get a guy who's hot and have a punt like that just land in the right spot he takes it to the house like it could happen yep multiple like he could have a punt return or a kick return multiple games in a row you get hot yeah. like anything could happen mm-hmm. we'll see you see like i said guys, i think it's, i think it's crazy player. but you never know you get one under your belt, you catch fire, you get that momentum. I know it's a completely different metric, but it kind of makes you think like Jarris Bird is a rookie. Like, mm-hmm. Just comes out of nowhere, and he gets that first interception. And what was it, like six interceptions over the next four weeks? It was just an unreal run. And, you know, it's something like you, you kind of think about that happening with a kick return, same type of situation. Yeah. 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 Now, the thing that makes this, what I think takes this over the top crazy, personally, is that he is missing the first three games at least. So you're making uh, this prediction in 14 games, which is – that would be like an all-world return season. Which could I, playoffs I count? Do you want to count playoffs and preseason to give you a head start? No, He's not preseason. in the Super Bowl, so. <laughs> yeah, not, not preseason. Start the Super but, Bowl off with one. Yeah. But the preseason won't count because he's already turned one. That's why so, I was saying. And I called that. And I called that. Now, uh, do we I'm count trying to help you out. Don't want no, no, it's just regular season. I don't think officially regular count, season. Like if we want yeah. to, I mean, we yeah, could do we it. Though. Yeah, to. yeah, we'll count it. Look, if how, he ends up getting five how, combined, we'll count it. Oh, we'll give you how, all yeah. the credit in the world. How mad do you think I would be if he got like say two in the regular season, right? And I'm like, well, okay, whatever. And then come playoff time, he like returns like like one per game up until the yeah. you know the Super Bowl. And now now he's got Breaks five in the like, Super this, Bowl. This God, <laughs> I can't believe this happened. We didn't count the playoffs, so. Um, if he's if no. he's one if he has four at the end of the regular season and he gets one more in the playoffs I'm counting it for you if he goes crazy in the playoffs I'm not I'm gonna drive you crazy and not count it <laughs> that's fair I deserve <laughs> that all right all right Mirka, your last prediction okay so this one depends if you think he's reached his ceiling or not yet and maybe a little bit of homer is some playing in here but I don't think he has I'm taking Josh Allen to account for over fifty touchdowns this year total for him. Um, it, it's not a crazy number. I mean, last year was no. 46. He had 37 passing, eight rushing, one receiving. Every year he's been in the league, it's been eight, nine, and eight rushing. So you think that stays consistent? Give him eight, just say miscellaneous touchdowns with the mm-hmm. rushing and receiving because maybe he gets another receiving. You can't account for that, uh, you know. But, um, oh, it's a prediction. Damn and toss, you can account for anything in a prediction because it's what you want to predict. So I am going to account for it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, 46 touchdowns last year. For him to add four more passing touchdowns, yeah, another that's game not crazy. With one more I, game, I think, yeah. But, you know, when you look at it, how many quarterbacks in history have thrown for 41 passing touchdowns in a season it's only been 12 but you've got seven of those over the last decade because it just shows it's a passing Mm -hmm. league so i'm not really worried about it being you know historical context and i think we're getting a brian dable like fuck you farewell tour not fuck you to the bills like fuck you to the nfl like what well this is for you not hiring me not waiting two extra weeks to hire me last year i'm going to bring terror upon you this year and what is his favorite toy of terror? It's Josh Allen. He's going to utilize this guy in every which way. I think he's going to find creative ways to get him in the end zone like he always does. More creative this year. He's going to keep him as the focal point, whether it's <laughs> as a running back and potentially as a receiver and just throwing the ball in general. With the receiving core he has, I, I can see Josh Allen breaking that 50-touchdown marker, which 
give him the MVP right now if that happens. I was yeah. I was just going to ask because one of my last two predictions was that he was going to win the MVP. So I was mm-hmm. just going to – since you already made your prediction about him, I was just going to try and pass that one off to you. You take that. Give him the MVP. I mean, you get 50-plus touchdowns. You better be given the MVP. Ah, yep. yeah, I mean, come on now. I mean, he's got to, right? If he doesn't, what a what a big media disrespect to Buffalo. Am I right? Oh yeah. I mean, he's one. This goes back to though, like he's one of the betting favorites going in. So as long as he has good games at the start, he can have like in this year. He's allowed to have like one or two games where he kind of trips up a little bit because he's mm-hmm. he's got so much momentum going from last year. Last year, you have one of those moments. You have to do so much to get back into the race. Where like he had the the Kansas City and then the Tennessee game back-to-back. That pretty much wiped him out of the MVP race of actually winning it because yeah. everybody just went to that, and he was like a dark horse last year. This year, he's not a dark horse. He's a favorite. So he's allowed to have one or two of those games, and it's going to be okay still. I, I like that one. So then my my last prediction, I'm going to stick with one of the guys that I have been a big fan of since he made the roster, and that was just last year. And I don't think the Bills run the ball all that often on the goal line. If they do, it's usually Josh Allen. It's not as often going to be Devin Singletary or Zach Moss. But this year, I think that's going to be a little bit different. I think they're going to run the ball a little bit more on the goal line, maybe a little bit less with Josh Allen, but a little bit more with somebody else. And it's somebody that we already mentioned when we were talking about Dawson Knox. I think Reggie Gilliam leads the Bills in rushing touchdowns with five. I think it's five, just five. But I think he leads the Bills in rushing touchdowns with five. He's going to have those opportunities. You give him a fullback dive or even just line him up in the backfield if you need to. He has that, like, he's he's, he's a big dude if you hand him the ball behind the line Mm -hmm. of scrimmage. I think he's going to get some of those opportunities that you've heard Dable talk about how he loves the idea of having that fullback back in the offense. You saw even in the preseason games, they gave him a couple of those opportunities and he converted. Had he not been able to convert those, I don't think those opportunities are going to come up as much in the regular season. But he already showed that he can do it when he's given the opportunity. Why not use him to protect Josh Allen a little bit more on the goal line? And instead of running one of the sweeps with Josh Allen, which are extremely effective, but let's protect him a little bit if we can do it. And Gilliam might be that guy who you give him the ball on the one-yard line. Let him be our Mike Allstott in those situations and let him just pound the ball into the end zone. I, I think it says a lot what you just said, protect Josh Allen, because right. who is who was a comp, right? Or, or Josh Allen was a comp for Cam Newton, or Cam Newton was a comp for Josh Allen, right? They've been compared. Josh Allen was a comp there. to Cam yeah. Newton, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're know, good with words. And then we what, what, what has happened to Cam Newton, right? Injuries has gotten in his way. I mean, sure, he can't throw to a receiver. I mean, the receiver has to be seven foot for him to actually throw to him or he'll overthrow him. But that's neither here nor there. He took a lot of hits when he was younger and he was running the ball like Josh Allen does. So protecting Josh Allen is very important. And when you have a guy, a weapon like Gilliam, right, handing him mm-hmm. the ball, that's so important. And you're right. Mm-hmm. If he hadn't converted on those short yardage, do you, do you think he would have gotten a lot of short yardage during the, the regular season? Nah, probably, probably not. But uh, yeah, they're probably one hundred percent. I love that prediction. It's gonna happen. I would bet money yeah, on it. I'm, I think you Even would get real like good it, odds with it too. Yeah, definitely. Even though I like actually Allen over fifty touchdowns, but oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say we probably wouldn't get good odds for him, right? It it would probably be like he's so he's one so of those like you probably would though. What? You're you're right. I'm I'm. Mm-hmm. I know it's opposite world. I'm I'm sitting here thinking like I mean we, the odds would probably be like what plus two thousand right for him to, to lead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably I, would, more I was than thinking that, probably right? even more. Yeah, yeah. So I I mean well last year Josh Allen for MVP was plus two thousand. And they probably July. if if Gilliam even has a line if you could find a line for his touchdowns anywhere they probably have it set at point five. Yeah. God bless that sports book that has that Reggie Gilliam line somewhere. It's it's lingering somewhere. It's, but someone somewhere has it. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, even though I like Allen over fifty rushing touchdown or fifty touch fifty rushing fifty touchdowns, rushing oh touchdowns, touchdowns will be <laughs> insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but uh, I do think you know with the contract and stuff, you saw him get a stinger last year and all that. They those short yard situations, they might be more you know adverse to giving the ball to Gilliam there instead of Allen because. 
as much as it's one of my favorite plays ever to just watch on replay that, you know, Dallas Thanksgiving uh, short yardage game by Allen, where you see him just fight and get it. It's such mm-hmm. a Josh Allen play, but it makes you cringe a little bit because he is just taking helmets to the body, getting hit all over the place. And now with, you know, you're invested in him. You've seen him get the stingers. He plays through them, but you don't want that to happen, especially if you're preparing for a Super Bowl run. Uh, They might be, you know, more inclined to give Gilliam those carries on the goal line, short yardage. And Gilliam, he's physical, obviously, but he's pretty athletic. I mean, he's a converted tight end. He's an H-back type guy. He could be lined up, you know, out wide and go in motion for a carry here and there. Not that he's a speedster like McKenzie where you want him coming all the way around and all that, but you can see him used in a lot of creative ways this Mm -hmm. year. I think most of them are going to come out of the backfield. So, yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. All right. So those are our, we each made four predictions. We'll have to see which ones end up coming true. We'll, we'll have at least like a couple of them come true. Hopefully all of them do. Hopefully. Hopefully all of them, especially Casey's return touchdown one. That'd be just insane. If you could call your shot on that one. I, I mean, You're that would viral. mean, yeah, you would, you would go viral. You would have been right on, on uh, Stevenson from start to finish when he got drafted. So, well, I, not even finished at that point. It'll just be um, the start. So I'm rarely ever wrong. That's just so <laughs> false. <laughs> uh, so when, this, when, Stevenson, okay. when, when Stevenson does this, right, I need you to clip me saying I'm rarely ever wrong and just putting that out there with it. Okay. Just putting it out there. And then I also need that to be your text tone. Right. So when I text you, I need it to say I'm rarely ever wrong. If it happens, oh, you have I, to agree will, with it. If you he gets agree five, if he gets five return touchdowns this year, I will do that for you. I think I'm safe. I hope I'm not, but I think I'm safe. <laughs> All right, Meerkat, give us, uh, give everybody your uh, where they can find you, what you're doing for train wreck, all that stuff, and then at the end, we'll take your prediction for the. I think have we gotten your prediction for the season yet? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay, so, so we'll do the, yeah. the season prediction and the week one prediction. All right, so season prediction, I'm going with 13 and 4. Uh, when I go through the schedule and go game by game, I, I end up at 14 and 3 pretty much every single time. But I'm going to take in that little bit of variance there where something wonky happens and stuff. There's always that game that comes out of nowhere. I mean, the Tennessee mm-hmm. game last year, I know there was a lot leading up to it, but didn't expect that result at all. And so you got to account for, you know, the wonkiness here and there, potential injury, all the COVID stuff. Sure. Um, so I feel comfortable, very comfortable saying 13 and four. It, it just feels like that type of year. 12 wins. I'm okay with, but honestly, an 11 win season going back to my future, even though know, that'd be a push. I, I'm disappointed in 11 wins. Even right. if that gets us in the playoffs and stuff. I, I, and now we sound spoiled as Bills fans going from more than, you know, ecstatic to make the playoffs at nine and seven because of Andy Dalton. Shout out to QB one back there behind me. I can't point. Uh, but <laughs> just like now we're spoiled and I'm like, oh, 11 wins. I'm going to be pissed. But <laughs> uh, this is this is a 13, 14 win, te- uh, win team coming into this season. And we got to live up to those expectations. We this is the year. Everyone, a lot of people think Buffalo is frauds, yada, yada. And a lot of people are giving us a lot of props, picking us for the Super Bowl now. So live up to those expectations. Show the football world we are that team now. We're finally here. We're legit, and so is Josh Allen. And then for week one, I think we come out hot. Um, I don't think the Steelers completely roll over and die, but I think that minus six and a half is a joke. I'm going to go with 31-17 Bills right now. Uh, I think I think we put up right around high 20s, right around 30 points. I don't think it's a decimation, especially to start out the year, work out the kinks, but I, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid at all, boys. I love it. I love it. All right, tell everybody where they can find you, and that's how we will – and then – Tell everybody where they can find you, and then you'll close it out with a go Bills yourself. Because we All still right. have to, we still have our whole uh, game prediction after this. All right, sounds good. Uh, well, you can find me, my personal account at at Meerkat Cat with some K's there, and then uh, you know I'm on Trainwreck Sports uh, at Degenerate uh, Zone, which is Degenerate Danger Zone. It's our gambling one. I mean, I'm doing the Dart of the Day. We got free money football. We have normal DDCs just breaking down college football, whatever you want. And then, you know, I, I float around. I'm all over the place. I'm guessing I'm the cap, happy hour hoops, stuff like that. So 
you follow train wreck you'll probably see my face somewhere god bless you and go bills there we go Big thanks to Meerkat for coming on and giving us that time. Almost every single time that we talk with somebody, it goes longer than we expect because we are just yeah. so bad at managing our time. Um, and we just get off topic a little bit. It happens. But I think that was that was a fun, interesting segment that was like a whole show's worth of a segment. But like, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I thought, I thought it was a fun conversation. And I'm really interested to see if some of the crazier predictions come true. We'll we'll see, um, but oh, I was gonna say Timon was a really good guest. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed having him on the show. Um, we should definitely get him back on. Um, it's okay if that joke went right over your head and it took a couple of seconds to get into it. Um, but let's talk. We talked at the, uh, at the beginning of the show. We do you, you want to um, explain your joke real quick? No, no, because no, you, just, you should okay. know you, you should know who I'm referencing. Um, you should, um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, you should. Let's, let's, let's get into it. It's week one, right? We're playing the Steelers. Um, we have played the Steelers pretty dead gum good <clears throat> the last couple times that we've played them. Um, then last of course we have years, a couple yeah. defense. We have a couple defensive players who are out, <clears throat> and we mentioned it on the show. Meerkat mentioned it. Um, the yak with the receivers. I think that is actually my biggest concern. Is the yak. Right, yards after catch, having um, you know uh, Claypool and then Juju and his dancing. Um, it, I'm just I'm I'm over Juju. Uh, if uh, if you want to talk about one receiver, I do not like in the whole entire league. Right, he's number one. Uh, I don't like Juju. Um, so I don't know what's got you worried about week one. Are you worried? Is there a specific thing that you're watching out for for the Steelers, or are you just like we're going to win 100? percent I mean, I'm definitely leaning more towards that second one, if I'm being okay. honest. Like, right. I'm, I'm definitely leaning more towards that second one. Um, I think what, I mean, what has me worried so, a little bit is maybe their their linebacker play is good, but they yeah. have, they can get pressure up the middle on defense. I'm actually yeah. less worried. This, so this is this is weird. I'm not worried about their defense as a whole because they have a pretty rough secondary outside of Minka Fitzpatrick. Like he's an absolute star. We know that he is one of the best safeties in the entire NFL. But outside He's of got him, killer right hook. they're, they're struggling. So I, I'm not worried. I was you want to explain Joe, that Joe, one too? Joe Hayden. I was going to say Joe Hayden uh, mm-hmm. back there in the back, but he's getting How old many, as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about that though. Like I'm not worried about the rest of the guys outside of Minka Fitzpatrick in the secondary. I, I think the Bills are going to be able to pass the ball really easily against this Steelers team. I, I think the only real issue with the defense is if they can get that pressure up the center where the Bills are weaker on the offensive line. I know I said that my, my concern is the depth of the tackles, but if yeah. we're talking about the starters, the interior of the offensive line is the weaker spot. So if they can get pressure up the center – then that's, I mean, that is a little bit of a cause concern for concern. I'm not real worried about Big Ben. Their offensive line is like, it's a makeshift offensive line right now. They got young guys, they got new guys. It's all over the place. I think the Bills defensive line, even if they don't get a ton of sacks this year or this game, I think they're going to have a lot of opportunities to at least hit Big Ben or make him throw the ball away or just disrupt him, like his passing uh, motion, whatever, like th- they'll be able to just, I, I think he's going to struggle. Honestly, I don't see him having a big game, at least when the, when the game matters. I think one of the most important things that we need to look out for this go around is how, how does the defense line up when it comes to controlling run? Right. That's I, what I was, was going to say is that I think the biggest- that Najee Harris He's what worries me about their offense. It's not their wide receivers because as good as they are, we like Sean McDermott builds his team, and this is from other people, not from myself, but like the the Bills defense is built around at least the secondary. Who are those guys that they like? The guys who can tackle well. So I, I'm not as worried about that yak stuff that everybody's talking about. Yards after catch. I'm not worried about that because the Bills don't typically let that up to, to guys. They're much more of the We'll, we'll let you catch the ball. You can get five yards. 
but we're we're probably going to be able to tackle you and stop the the play after you catch the ball. You're not going to get a whole lot farther than that. So I'm not really worried about the yak. But it's week what one. What worries me is definitely more. Yeah, it, I'm, it, it, it's week one. We talked about this with Damon last suspect, week too, though. Right? Offenses might be a little suspect, suspect week one yeah. too because of like it, it's going to be really interesting. It's a completely different year than last year. As much as we have extremely high expectations. They are like it's reasonable to have those high expectations. We should have those high expectations, but every team is going into a different situation than last year because of the fans being in the stands. It's going to make things more difficult on offenses to get going early. Like it, it's going to be a completely different ball game than last year. That being said, the Bills are just a more talented team, whether TJ Watt plays or not, and that's a whole different thing. By the time this comes out. TJ Watt's situation with his contract, they might have that figured out, or he might still be not really practicing and then not on track to be playing either. Like we don't really know what's going on with that. Last I heard, they're struggling because the Steelers were not willing to really give guaranteed money after the first year. And if I was him, I wouldn't want that deal either. So yeah. like he they if if he doesn't play, even more of an advantage towards the Bills. He is a superstar. He's one of the best defensive players in the league. We saw him get neutralized last year. You don't expect that to happen every single time. But if he's not out there, that's just going to give Josh Allen even more time. So I'm not as worried about their defense as a whole. I am definitely a little bit nervous about how the Bills running game or run defense is going to be able to perform, though, because we haven't seen it be all that great. The last like two years, that's been the that's been the weakness of the defense. Well, I was I was going to say, you know, we just got done doing bold predictions, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, shout out, shout out to everybody who stuck around to to hear us talk about the game predictions. Uh, shout out yeah. to those guys. Um, wh- why don't we just make a, a quick bold prediction, right? I just want to make a quick bold prediction. Okay, I want to say that the Buffalo crowd causes two or more false starts on the Steelers. Well, let's let's I'll, I'll give you this. To make it even better, we'll go okay. three or more false starts or delay of games. Ooh, okay, yep, three or more. Yep, we can do because I think I think that's a big thing that you know uh, home field advantage. We we talk about the the crowd being back, right? And sure, there's going to be some people out there saying, "Well, Josh Allen can't play with a crowd." And blah, blah. That's the funniest Those freaking narrative I've ever heard in my life. He can't play with a crowd. It's like the dude's been playing competitive football for a long time now. I think crowds are the least of his problem, right? So, I mean, uh, that's so dumb. But but you got to think, you know, Bills Mafia. What did they do? They caused a false start in the preseason. And Josh came out and said, "Well, hey, it's it's their preseason as well." Um, so I, I'm excited to see that. I think with makeshift offensive line, right, they, they're going to cause some problems out there. And I think that's very important that we need to check out because how often are you really going to expect the run game to get going, right? If all of a sudden you're you're down, let's say they're down ten to zero, right? All of a sudden now you get a false start. Right, you're backed up again. It's first and fifteen. Right? Are you you're going to try to get the run game going again? Now it's third and eight. You're third and long. You're being you're putting your you know offense in a, in a in a bad situation. So I don't know. There's a lot that could go right, but I've never understood people who are like I'm not worried at all going into a football game. That, like I've so never the, understood the weird that. the weird thing is that every single I, I the reason I said I lean more towards being that way of just like I'm not worried I will always be worried when game I'm worried I can't okay, help good. that Thank but you, don't be the reason that. like the reason that I say I lean more towards being not really worried is because every area of the Steelers team as a whole you look at their strong spots what they do really well where their best players are you look at the bills there's there's clear ways that the Bills could take advantage of just that group. If it's the wide receivers, the wide receivers are a strong point of the Steelers team. You get after Big Ben, the wide receivers don't have as big of an effect. How do they get after Big Ben? The Steelers' offensive line isn't isn't very good right now. It's a makeshift offensive line. And then you go, okay, well, running game. It's definitely a, a worry of Najee Harris, though he's a rookie, he is extremely talented. If he yeah, gets going, good, man. that could be a problem. But how do you stop him? Well, you, you hit him in the backfield. How do you do that? Well, you you use the makeshift offensive line to your advantage. And yeah. then you go over to the, the defensive side of the ball. Well, they get a lot of pressure up the middle. Throw a couple screens. 
well, they have really good linebackers. Okay, fine. They don't have great corners, and we don't have to try and throw to the middle of the field all the time. All the time. Like, there's there's plenty of ways that the Bills can take advantage of this Steelers team. As much as they have a couple of players, more than a couple, like they have good players, but they have enough holes that I'm not really worried about the Bills not being able to take advantage of it, if that makes sense. So it does make sense. Let's let's get into our score predictions because I said in the beginning of the show that I see them going, you know, Bills winning twenty seven to fourteen. Um, I I really want to say twenty seven to thirteen just because it's funny to think of them missing an extra point. But twenty seven to fourteen. I mean, they could also have two field goals and a touchdown. Not to rain on your parade there, but I look, definitely. Did. Hey, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, it's a lot funnier. <laughs> it's a lot funnier to think of them missing a field goal or it is. an extra point. Um. But anyways, twenty-seven to fourteen um, is is my game prediction. What is yours? You said you, you weren't sure yet. I want to put you yeah, on the spot. Tell yeah. Me. So I I had not even as much as like I I'm the one who prepares a little bit more for the show. I won't even say a lot more because wow, neither of us prepare all that I did my homework all that much. Yeah, you did so much homework. <laughs> so much head. homework. <laughs> um, but. I have, I didn't really put much thought into what's my actual score prediction going to be because I was so focused on the predictions for the regular season. What am I going to do for those? How am I going to make sure I have enough that if you guys take mine, I'll be able to still be okay there. So I didn't think about an actual score prediction, but I do think that the Bills are going to be able to start off hot because we've seen like Josh Allen preseason just look good right away. I, yeah. I don't have concerns about this offense at all. Even if there's a turnover early or there's like an issue early with the first drive, maybe there's a three and out, whatever. I don't care. I still think the Bills could put up seven, 14, whatever. Like they could have a score to two scores in the first quarter, no problem, because they could score like that. Like they could score real quick. So I'm not really, I I don't know where to go with this. I don't want to overdo my prediction and be like, oh, they're going to put up 40. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I do think that the Bills are going to hit the 30s, though. I think I'm going to go 34 to 17. I really hope that's not the same as Meerkat's score prediction. It might be. His, Did I he go 31? Like 32, something like that. It was, it was low 30s. It was low 30s. Okay. Yeah, it, it was It was low 30. You know what? Yeah, 34. Because, I mean, the Bills, are, I think that the, the Bills end up having to kick a field goal at some point. But 34, 17, I think. The Bills are going to pile on a little bit early and then probably slow down and do a little bit more ball control in the second half. Or maybe the game starts slow and then the second and third quarter, they really put it on. But I think by the end of the game, the starters aren't even playing because the game's over, at least on offense. So I think the Bills end up handling the Steelers. I don't I don't even necessarily still want to say easily, but like we talked about with Meerkat, they're going to cover the spread. They're covering that six and a half. They're going to win by a touchdown or more. And I like it to be more than two touchdowns at that point. I think they double them up 34 17. Yeah, sounds good to me. I mean, I, yeah. still, I, I still like mine, but whatever. <laughs> you, you look, we all will like our own prediction better, I, I would hope. <clears throat> um, the, the, I guess the, the last thing is do you think your <laughs> score prediction? stays the same whether or not TJ Watt plays. That's like I I'm actually interested in that. Um uh, yeah, it stays the same. I mean, okay. uh, I get that he's a factor, but at the same time he's not playing offense, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Steven Tewitt yeah. is out as well on that defense. So it's, it's it, like, it makes a, it makes a big difference. Yeah, that, that's a, that is a big difference right there in the middle of the defensive line. So then you can afford to you know double team what right. So no, I don't, I don't think he'll be a factor this game. He might he if he plays he might have a sack right. But at the same time, I just still don't know if he's even gonna, like I'm. I don't think he's going to end up playing. I don't know. I'm going to end up being no. dead wrong because this contract situation is going to get figured out before the show even comes out. Well, I, my, just to get back to your point, my score prediction is not going to change. It's 27-14. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say maybe it changes to like 31-17, but like I, I don't think it changes all that much because the Bills offense should still be able to just kind of have their way with yeah. the Steelers in, in general. So 
Um, moving forward, um, it'll be a lot easier just in, in season. Just talking about games, talking about football. We'll be talking about actual football games for the Bills and not just like what ifs. And I'm Finally. excited. Yeah, Finally. I know. I know. Everybody take a breath, right? Get some rest. <laughs> Are we're we, here. We're air, we're air frying wings. Like just everybody, calm down. Right? Yeah, it's gonna be. It's, so, it's gonna be good. It's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna be, be a good year. I'm excited. It's be so, great. let's close it out then. Let me get a go, Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.